to the, the situation where a, a practitioner is treating a patient, the first thing that we you know, thought about was distance because um, as many of you know, the, it is believed that qi can act at a distance. But again, we're in, in this case looking at this infrasonic component of qigong. So, you know, we just said, well, you know, does it act? You know, does it does it uh, decrease with distance? And, and of course, it does. It it acted like we expected. So, this would this would you know push us to the to the idea that if we're going to talk about external qigong and chemotherapy combination, you'd really want to be talking about close up qigong rather than the distant qigong. And, and I want to um, end with a you know, somewhat provocative reflection on this because, um, as, I, as I said in the beginning with the, my instruction for dumping buckets, there was this uh, clear instruction by my teacher that you want to not make the chi go deep into your head until you get to your body where you're willing to let it penetrate. And so external qigong or internal qigong, in the case of integrating this with a chemotherapy treatment, you'd want to do the exact opposite because the whole point is you want to have a lower dose of chemotherapy in the body and you don't want to make those cells more sensitive to chemotherapy. You want to make the cells inside the skull more sensitive because that's where you want the chemotherapy to be effective. So it's a bit of a flip-flop from, from the, the, just the, the normal uh, description of Qigong, at least in the way that I was taught. So I'll end with that and uh, ask for any questions. Thank you. Yes? Uh, in, the, in concerning that kind of energy, you know, uh, we generally think that the effects are due to heating. I don't if, know if you didn't mention any heating measurements. How did you uh, connect with you know, ultrasound and RF has been used in the, same, in the same way, and it's got some kind of selective effect. We understand by heating, and it may not be uniform, but it'll be selectively heating depending on the frequency. So, yeah. I don't know how you dealt with it. You know, so, so yeah, the environmental chamber has a heating element that surrounds the the petri. So, it's actually not a petri dish. You know, these uh, a cell culture plate has a metal frame that controls the heat of, this, of, the, um, of the plate. And so we have a, a thermistor that we, we'd set up actually for the Qigong experiments uh, with actual Qigong practitioners earlier. So we did see, confirm that our heat plate that was controlling the heat, of, so there are two separate heating elements, one for the plate and one for the outside of the chamber. So we did confirm that the, the, the heat controlling element was, was Overpowering any kind of heating that was coming from the. Uh, it can be very sun. selective in the membrane mm -hmm. and everything. I mean, this is a very. No. These tissues absorb this energy differently depending on frequency. Yes, well, no, so we didn't measure the, the temperature of the outside of the cells. So the effect at the cells could, could be due to that. I don't, I don't know. Next question is David. Dr. Yama, uh, Mr. Two, two questions. Have you, have you spoken <laughs> to the. Uh, the folks at the Monroe Institute. Did you feel that? <laughs> Back up just a little bit. Okay, that's fine. I have not. Why? Uh, well, that was them just coming through. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Thank you for reminding me. Whales, rhinoceros, hippopotamus, giraffe, and alligators are now on the list as well of, of using infrasound. Thank you. Should we back to So I, what I'm saying is that these known components are part of external Qigong treatment. And as distinct, as distinct from 
chi itself. So these were studies done just to see, in the no, with the known tools we have, what can we measure coming out of these practitioners? Next question. We were looking for that sweet spot by choosing these sub-peaks. So we've only, at this point, looked at these three that I showed, the, the 8, 8.5, 10.5. I should say those, those were the two sweet spot attempts. And then the 15 was just meant to be the upper limit of, of what was coming out of the Qigong machine. Right, but you haven't gone beyond the Qigong machine to see whether or not it would We haven't. What's your guess? We're afraid of the brown note. We don't want to hit the brown <laughs> note. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is that it's, it's possible to do that, and I'd love to get in there and yeah. tweak around with it. Yes. Uh, hey, uh, uh, on your experiments with the apoptosis and yeah. cisplatinum, uh, it looked to me like you had uh, very variable effects in the different cell lines. Yes. And according to your error bars, it looked like only statistical significance in one of those cell lines, the third one. Yeah. The P values were significant or not? What were the P values? Okay. And what was the implication for clinical applications considering your effect seems to only work in one of those cell lines? It was significant in three of the cell lines. Oh. Uh, it yeah. affected a lot of uh, errors. Yeah. The deviations were overlapping. They were, they were significant in three. And yes, I think it's, that, that's why we were very interested to look at the predictive ability of the, of the calcium uptake, because it, it indicates that it's not going to work for every tumor. And so the, the chance is that it would actually fit into a clinical you know, scenario. The tumor's excised, you'd have a chance to quickly look if infrasound was going to be effective in, in increasing the uptake of the chemotherapy, and then determine whether it would be useful for that particular, you know, patient. We have time for one quick question. Yes. How do you control for the effect of intention uh, here? I mean, how do you know that the results were due to uh, uh, infrasound and not uh, the intention of the uh, operator of the experiment? <laughs> <laughs> I got to think because we, we have, uh, I got to think if we did blinding on these experiments, we, you know, these, these particular set of experiments have grown out of many years of working with Qigong practitioners where we have blinding up the yin-yang and we have random number generators devised just to place the, the cells in the, in the incubators. And I, wa I want to say that we did not blind these experiments. Our control condition was in the environmental chamber at the same time um, but uh, uh, away from, there was actually, we had two generators, one turned on, one turned off, just to control, there's a magnet inside of that trans transducer head. So we controlled for magnetism and we did not control for intention in these experiments. Uh, no, yeah. we have no time. Thank okay. you very much. All right. uh, please be back by 3.30.